we need to have a youth movement that's based on our indigenous knowledge, which was the mastery of our ecology and our cosmology. Mm. And we don't, we don't even know that the light in the sky is called a sun, <laughs> or that the sun does more and make you warm. Because that whole body of knowledge is no longer a part of our way of life. Where do we start? And the people who are listening to us, some sitting and being judgmental, and I'm gonna be hard on the people who are listening because we're not entertainers. We're trying to give you instructions. You know, if you think Jesus can do, prove it. Have Jesus do it for us and I will join you. If you think Allah can do it, have Allah do it and I will join you. If you think Buddha can do it, have Buddha do it. I will join you. If, if you think any of these things that we've devoted our minds to submitting to, that our enemies have brought over the centuries, is going to free us, answer the question, why hasn't it done so? Why hasn't it done so? I, I, even, passed the, I, I even passed a comment the other day, and I said, if... If Jesus promised the Israelites and the Jews Jerusalem, in all honesty, what has he leave us alone? What, what, has he, what has he promised the African? What is in it for us? We, we are here fantasizing about doing pilgrimages to Mecca, pilgrimages to Jerusalem. You know, and you can't even make a pilgrimage to your own grandfather's grave. You can't. You can't even know what is important. And, and, for me, for me, this has become one of the most most degrading well, concept of humanity, where you even debase yourself to becoming a slave of the same God that colonized you. What people fail to understand is that this religion is an ideological arm of the colonizer's politics. They're an ideological arm of the colonizer's politics no matter which one it is, you know? You're telling me that we were here for millions of years and didn't know God? We were here for millions of years and didn't have a way to show devotion and worship to the creation? We had to wait for a murderer, a genocide, and a rapist to hand us, to hand us the tool to know the divine? That is the most ridiculous notion in the world. And we have to examine ourselves in the mirror that we look into every morning to see how ridiculous that notion is. That our mothers uh, and fathers who loved us more than anything on earth did not give us a way to know reality. But our murderers and our rapists would give us a way to know reality. How foolish. I, 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 I paused the comment the other day. You can correct me, Dr. Small. When I said religion, particularly in the South, where we've interacted with Christianity, it has actually become a tool of managing African ambition and African anger. Now you cannot even get what belongs to you because the religion that you believe in says you can't do it. You must love your enemies. You must be smashed on one cheek, give away the other cheek. You have no abiding city here. You're going to go to heaven, leave the world and all its riches behind. God has riches for you in heaven. I mean, if, honestly, if God wanted us in heaven, the man who, what, 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 what the hell did he put us in here on earth to do what? Well, just look at it like this. Let's play history on the simple. In such a way, yeah, even after the great battle of Islamabad, when he had to face those cannons and those Gatling guns, and we lost thousands of Zulu people in one day, murdered, the, the banner, the, the jack of Britain was in one hand and the banner with the cross was in the other hand. For those who were pulling the triggers of the Gatling guns that was murdering the hundreds of thousands of Zulu people, injuring hundreds of thousands, murdering thousands, it was bringing us that religion that we now hold sacred. That doesn't even make basic logic. It's not even basic logic. And so... We have to ex re-examine, do we love our mothers and fathers, even by their standard? Honor your mother and your father that your day may be long upon the earth. Well, whose mother and father are you honoring? If you honor yours, 
it will tell you the book you just read that gave you those instructions is the book of your enemy and not of your mother and father who was murdered by those carrying that book. So we have to make common sense, make common sense again. I mean, having, having done theology myself, I think somewhere in the book of Acts or the book of uh, Acts 17 or Acts 19, where it says, it is God who placed us on the face of the earth and gave us spaces where each nation should live so that each nation would seek for God, though he is not far away from any one of them. At the end of the day, you don't have to wait for someone to give you a passport of importance. All religions is the culture of its inventor. All religions is the culture of its inventor. None of the ones that is the dominant ones in Africa today was invented by Africans. There you go. It's as simple as that. So where's the one that my great mother and father invented? I want that. When I tried to practice that, my own brothers and sisters, who was carrying the banner of my parents' murderers, is laughing at me and saying I'm being foolish for loving my mother and father more than I love their murderers and rapists. That is so sad. And, and the beautiful part about African African uh, spirituality, I don't, want, I don't want to call it a religion, it, it is that it, uh, it has the economic value in it, it has the biological preservation in it, it has the ecological and preservation in terms of the community, environmental intelligence in it, 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 it is a community in it. It is not about what a person going to a, to, to a church once a week go and kneel in front of a wooden cross. But it becomes a daily expression, whether we're eating, or we're drinking, or we're dancing, or we're bathing in the river, or we're cutting a tree, or we're killing a cow for food, and etc. Spirituality has, it's, we are marrying, or we are burying. Anything that we're doing has a fundamental, intrinsic, spiritual expression to it. It allows us to live, well, not to die. It allows us to live. Look at Japan. Japan, they said, has the healthiest nation in the world. Its people live longer than any people in the world. 90% of its people, if not 99, practice the Shinto, Japanese indigenous ancestral tradition, which is very much akin to ours in terms of intent and reality. If you go to any culture, that is not an imperialist invader and a colonizer. The indigenous, their religion is tied to their ancestral indigeny. And it is their ancestral sacred science, which is their understanding of ecology and cosmology at that time. And explained to themselves in a way that they can live in harmony with one another, nature and the rest of the universe. Mm -hmm. Westerners understand this very clearly. They have taken African sacred science and they now call it science. Mm -hmm. And if you just read the books of the Greeks and the Romans, which was plagiarized African works out of North Africa and Northeast Africa, and thanks to the Arab invasion, the Turks, primarily we call them Arabs, but the Turks and the Kurds who took over the Islamic system from the Arabs in the 8th century, they took our knowledge all over Europe and it created the European Renaissance in science and music and no one say where the Renaissance came from. First, you can only call it a rebirth. If you once had a birth, Europe had no birth in science before that. So what they call the Renaissance was not a Renaissance, but a coming and awakening for the first time of Europe, thanks to the wisdom of Africa that Islam brought to your door which the Greeks had tried to bring to your doorstep earlier. But history will erase the demon's mystery and we will stop being so foolish about identity. Because true freedom is to be shackled to your identity. If you're shackled to someone else's identity, you're nothing more than a slave in chains. Whether it's psychological chains, cultural chains, religious chains, or physical chains. If you're shackled to someone else's identity, you're in chain and you're a slave to them. Only being shackled to the identity of your own indigenous ancestry can you know freedom, really.
And I, and I think what you're saying, Professor, is very, very important. And, and I think this is, the, this is the schizophrenic part of many of these religions we find ourselves trapped in. Because we, we, we tend not to understand the integral, intertwining integration of how spirituality converts itself into economics, converts itself into, into politics, converts itself into fashion, converts itself into music and art, converts itself into governance. Because at the end of the day, at the center of it, is the quality of your spirituality will determine the, the society that you're going to build. As, as rightfully you say, that every religion is, it takes the form of the one who forms it. So if the Saudi Arabians would create their Islam the, around the Black Rock, you can be sure that the economy around the Black Rock will, will grow around the, the Black Rock. The economy of Jerusalem will grow around Jerusalem. The economy of the Vatican will grow around the Vatican. And the economy of Washington will grow around Washington. And if we can begin to say we aren't any, the, the, the economy of Zimbabwe, it must grow around the Great Zimbabwe. And, and it, it must grow around the Yoruba. It must grow around the Koi and the Sun and the rest of the African tribes. And until we understand that the central part of our livelihood and societal construct is actually our spiritual expression, connectivity to the land, connectivity to the water, connectivity to the air, which speaks to the epistemologies of our total existence. The, the fragmented thought of we are going to create an economy without understanding the spirituality of that economy. We are going to get people educated without understanding the spirituality of that education. We, we, then it becomes, it becomes chaotic because you are going to produce a student who is not true to, 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 to their ethnic grounding, you are going to produce a, an economist who does not understand and respect the ancestral ground and the value of preservation. So for me, spirituality actually becomes the central focus because if before you dig a mineral, you are going to remember what you must do before you break the ground. If right. you are going to cut a tree, you are going to know what to do before you cut the tree. If you are going to draw water, you know what you must do beside the river before you draw the water. Then for me, the African spirituality actually has a preservative understanding, re symbiotic relationship between the one who is alive and the one who has passed on.